Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. Today we're going to look at my Mosin Nagant. This is a Chinese Model 53, the carbine version. Here it is on my gun rack shown between my M1 Garand on the bottom and my M1A on the top. As you can see the carbine with the uh, bayonet extended is about the same length as M1 Garand with the 10 inch bayonet on it. Um, the most of you are probably familiar with the um, the longer version, and I'll talk about that one in a minute. When you buy most of the gun, this is what you want to check. You want to take a um, cartridge, insert it in the muzzle like this to see if it has been counterbored. Uh, your rifle is worth more if it has not been counterbored. This one has not been counterbored. As you can see, there is about five eighths of an inch space. Uh, on the bullet before you reach the uh, shell casing right here about 5 8 inch if it has been counter bored what, ha what they do is they bore into the muzzle about uh, an inch or so uh, it increases the accuracy on an old rifle and this is what it will look like if it has not been counter bored This is what my rifle looked like when I first bought it. The good thing about a uh, Mosin uh, Nagants is they're very inexpensive. You can get one for less than $150. So it's a good uh, rifle for um, if you want a, a rifle for um, a decoy or a throwaway rifle for when they come and confiscate your gun. If you want to have a decoy, uh, it's a good functioning military rifle, bolt action rifle. Did some work on this obviously if you want to see the uh, what I did to the stock look at my video on restoring my M1 Garand I used the same procedure for restoring this stock that I did on my M1 Garand so I'm not going to go into details here Cosmoline you keep my rifle clean Cosmoline is a, a pain in the rear but it is uh, necessary this uh, this it does protect the metal. This uh, rifle was made in 1955 and it would be a rust bucket right now if it had not been stored in Cosmoline. But you do have to remove the Cosmoline, of course. A lot of videos on YouTube showing how to remove Cosmoline. But that's how you end up with a nice clean metal with little rust. Uh, I use a simple green to remove Cosmoline. Um, it was pretty nasty with this gun so I actually used um, mineral spirits which worked a little bit better than simple green and then I finished it up with uh, simple green now getting cosmoline out of the stock is another matter it's even more difficult than getting it out of the metal uh, you see YouTube videos of people putting it in the Sun like I did here uh, it takes days in the hot summer Sun to do this you can also use a heat lamp to do this but you just let the rifle sweat it out just put it in the hot sun all day long just let it sweat out and every now and then you wipe it wipe it off but uh, this doesn't get enough of the cosmoline out for me so um, I use the procedure using boiling water that I show on my M1 Garand video so if you want to see how I removed the cosmoline from uh, this stock I used um, I wrapped it in uh, rags and poured boiling water on it and then used simple green on it did that repeatedly to just um, get the cosmoline out of the stock. Turned out very nicely. Of course, uh, this rifle is uh, older than I am, it, and it has some uh, character. Um, I like the the looks of it. It looks uh, like a tree bark uh, camo, uh, but it's um, really smooth. If you would hand this uh, rifle to a blind man, he would. Uh, Feel it and think it was almost a new rifle because um, it um, it actually feels real smooth, satin finished. I'm not going to go into detail about uh, disassembling a Mosin Nagant because there are many, many, many uh, videos on YouTube showing how to disassemble it. But one thing I will show that I did not see another video on and that's how to remove the retainers uh, for the barrel bands. These two holes right here, you use a 1 16th inch punch and you punch out 
just like this you punch out the um, barrel bin retainers they come out like this you want to take these out they're easy to take out but you want to take them out because you want to clean these up real good there'll be a mess underneath them and also when you clean and when you uh, sand your stock you want these out of there uh, with the bolt I'll say just a little bit about the bolt because I see a lot of YouTube videos of people um, disassembling and assembling a bolt uh, you want one of these uh, gauges here uh, and, and you want to make sure that you check the protrusion of your firing pin. Your firing pin should touch the metal on the first notch. It should t touch it, but it should not touch the second notch, this one right here. There should be a little bit of space there, and if there isn't, the firing pin could actually push the primer all the way into the cartridge, and um, you could have gases escaping, which could be dangerous situation touch here it should touch this one and it should not touch this one now when you see people on YouTube taking the um, taking this thing apart you see them pressing the firing pin onto a, a hard surface that's not necessary I don't recommend it this little device right here or the fourth notch on your your gauge that I just showed you can be used to unscrew the firing pin you want the, the screw will come to here flush here and you want this lined up this little scratch back here you want that to be lined up but the way that you uh, disassemble the firing pin you don't have to press the firing pin into a, a board what you do is you just take this device right here and you unscrew the firing pin and you put it back together the same way putting this thing back together It's the wrong way to do it. If you do it the wrong way, what happens when you cock it is uh, the the end will come off. This is the wrong way. This is the right way. This little nubbin right there has to fit into that notch like that. This right there. Then you pull back and cock it. Pull back and turn it. And then this goes into that notch right there and the firing pin doesn't show because it's in the cocked position and any most in the gun owner certainly should have one of these these are the original Chinese uh, cartridge holders uh, which hold each one holds three <coughs> um, speed loaders each speed loader holds five cartridges so this uh, little a device here holds uh, 30. Now when you get one of these uh, you make sure you treat the leather with the leather conditioner. Here's the um, speed loader. This is how you load the five cartridges in your speed loader. It's a neat little ammo pouch. I really like this uh, ammo pouch. And here's how you load using the speed loader. All right, there's a little notch right there that the speed loader fits into. You push them in like this. Take out the speed loader. Fits in there just like that. This is a clip. Some of you do not understand the difference between a clip and a magazine. This is a magazine. This is a clip. Magazine. Clip. A lot of you will call the uh, magazine a clip and there is a difference. It's a real neat rifle. Um, I've shot it. It is a lot of fun to shoot. This is Survival Doc reminding you 
be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.